This is a leftover trim piece from the amethyst that I used to create the angelfish design in a previous video. And here's the video uh, where you can see the angelfish and where I got this piece of trim rough. I've gone ahead and uh, made the outline of the stone with uh, all I needed was 1200 grit lap. I didn't have to go any rougher than that. So I've got it uh, preformed. Now what I've decided to do is you can see that my magnificent trim saw technique did not cut this perfectly flat. I mean, I, okay, I goofed a little bit. Still getting, you know, still improving with my trim saw. I didn't used to use it at all. And now I'm trying to use it as often as I can. So I'm going to treat this as the top of the stone. I'm gonna rough in, there's only three lines of instruction and one is the table. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna rough in the crown and uh, flatten the table with a, just, just with the uh, 1200 grit. And then I'm gonna transfer, use a transfer jig. And the reason is, is that see all the, the adhesive here, my uh, two-part epoxy, I've already ground into it. So I think I could probably continue to work this as normal, but I'm, I'm grinding epoxy which is not gonna help, you know, it's gonna gum up the laps. It could cause the stone to become loose. Lots of bad things can happen and not a lot of good things. So by transferring the uh, stone, cleaning up the uh, crown, and roughing in the table, transferring the stone to another dop, a thinner dop, I can get rid of all this glue, adhesive, uh, two-part epoxy, and work from there. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now this is a very narrow or shallow piece of gemstone rough and I actually have a gem design in mind which calls for a very shallow piece of rough. The design has a crown to width ratio of 0.74 and a pavilion to width ratio of 0.208. Perfect for a thin piece of rough like this one. So the design I have in mind is called sailboat or actually it's called Sailboat Ring of Fire, and the cut was designed by Jay Hammer. The design can be found in the database of gem cutting designs at facetdiagrams.org, and it can be downloaded for free. It's in the public domain. This is what a thin piece of amethyst should look like when I'm done cutting it into a sailboat. Here is some of the information about the sailboat design including the thin pavilion to width and crown to width ratios that I talked about earlier for this gem design. If you don't understand the information on this gem design, that's not a problem. I explain it all in my two-part video. Just go to those videos if you want to understand this information. Okay, for our amethyst sailboat, I've uh, pretty much just cleaned up the uh, top part of the stone. I brought in the first the first two tiers just a little bit and then flattened the top and by bringing this in of course you know it made it a little higher than it would have it gave me a little more space because you know if, if the low point was here and we would have cut leveled off the low point we would have lost a lot of rough but by moving these facets in the circle became smaller in the center for leveling it became a little bit higher so again it just cleaned up and now I'm going to put in, basically going to switch and we'll be using this dop, which is a much smaller dop than this dop. And we won't have the epoxy all over the side of the stone. We'll be cutting through it with our laps. That's basically all we're doing is getting, just getting a better grip on the stone and then go back to, uh, to working on our sailboat. Okay, so we just want to make sure we've got epoxy on both the stone and a little ways up the dock. And it takes a little while to set, so you, you know, may have to turn the transfer jig over to let gravity kind of make sure the epoxy doesn't run too far down your lap, your dock, or too far up the stone. We'll put the stone aside and uh, be ready to cut it uh, tomorrow, work on it some more. All right, for our sailboat, I've uh, gone ahead and went ahead and polished the uh, the girdle and now we'll uh, finish cutting the rest of the pavilion 
Now that the girdle's all polished up, it's going to be about 10 millimeters in size. So now we'll work on the rest of the pavilion. So for instruction number two on the pavilion, we set the angle at nine degrees and the index at 33 degrees right there. And nine degrees is almost uh, cutting the table. So, and this is to cut one facet uh, that facet number two, which is the sail, the back sail on the sailboat. I'm sure it has a name for those who have sailboats. But uh, this facet, the only instructions there are say it's to size the sailboat. So let's see, let's fast it a little bit and see what we do as far as sizing the sailboat. All right, so size sailboat. I have no idea, but I did um, cut about half the stone with my 12M lap. So maybe that sizes the sailboat. We'll see. I don't, I'm not sure what that means, so I don't want to overdo it. Um, so if the sail maybe that i mean it's related to the sail so if we cutting half the stone face then maybe that sets the size i don't know we'll move on with the next instruction and see what happens and if we can figure out what size the sailboat exactly means i'm having a bit of trouble with the dad or digital angle dial of my altertech v5 the power supply that goes into my dad with this jack is, is losing power the dad should automatically calculate the degree angle that I'm about to cut. But what is happening is as I move the spindle around, either the jack or this cable is disconnecting and I'm losing power, which is causing the dad to go back and go to a flashing 9999. So I'll need to put in a call to our friends at Altertech. As I'm trying to work on a facet, and I'll get one facet done. Now I want to set the uh, the next facet, and as you can see, it went back to 999. So there was an interruption of power somewhere. Now I've got it back. So I can work that facet. But when I go to the next facet and to cut it, okay, we're good. We'll see how, uh, we'll see if we make it around without another malfunction. What I'm trying to do is uh, make the stone a little bit smaller so I'm trimming the girdle. And uh, have another malfunction. So it's not supposed to do that where it starts flashing 999. And I'm not sure now if it's correct, correctly identifying 90 degrees. So that's the, uh, that's the malfunction we're having. Um, it's a little bit frustrating. But I'll talk to Altertech and see what they say there. It's, uh, it's done it again.
and it's did it again. Okay, I've gone around the, uh, the girdle of our stone and uh, that was uh, 24 facets around the girdle and I didn't count how many malfunctions we had. They were relatively simple malfunctions. I just had to lift, lift the indicator and, and keep fiddling with it until the, the dad angle started operating. But other times I've had that wouldn't work and I've had to unplug the jack, plug it back in, twist it around to get it to work. So something's wrong. There's some something wrong, whether it's the power into our power supply problem or something, but I'll try, like I said, I'll try to find out uh, from Altatech what the problem is. I'm sure I'm not the first person to ever experience this problem. And so they'll have a, they'll have an idea of what to do. I'll let you know the fix. Okay, so for my problem with the shorting out of my, my dad system with the jack and the power supply, I contacted Ultratech and I contacted a number of other faceters. I have not heard back from Ultratech yet, but you know, it, it hasn't been very long and there is a lot going on right now with COVID. Maybe they're not in the office, I'm not sure. But the other, a number of other faceters have said they had the same problem. They experienced the same problem. The problem is in the, the power supply and the jack. As you raise and lower the index, the jack, the wire is not strong enough and it eventually cracks. One person suggested the, that it's the power supply. If it surges, that, that would cause it to reset to a flashing 999. I don't think that's the case in my case because I do, do have a power surge that I plug all my plugs into. So I don't think that's the case there. Other people suggested rubber bands. One person, it was in his case that the jack was slipping out. So he put a rubber band around this hole fixture and around the uh, jack holding it in a big wide rubber band which he says you get those when you buy a bunch of broccoli at the grocery store there's the rubber band that holds it together so that's what he uses some other people have the said that they they take the cable and somehow hook it somewhere over here with with rubber bands or or um, tie strips. So I started experimenting with the rubber band. Holding the jack in wasn't the issue. What the issue for me was is that this cable that goes from the jack out that way shorts out. But if I bring it back, loop it back towards the jack, kind of back in on itself, it keeps it tight. So I put some rubber band, a rubber band, and have looped it back. I missed a call from Altertech earlier, but they were responsive and I'll get a hold of them when they open up in the morning tomorrow. They're on West Coast time, so I need to give them a little more time. I'll let you know what the super team at Altertech tells me about this issue. And now with this temporary fix in place, it's uh, back to fastening. Okay, I've finished cutting all the facets with uh, uh, the 12M, my 12M lap. It's not a, it's not a 1200 grit lap, it's from Adamus and uh, a 12 m is uh, roughly the equivalent if there was such a thing of a, a 1500 grit lap he doesn't make a 1200 equivalent so but it's close to a 1200 so um, i still have some work to do but we've got these are the sails sail there sail there little sailboats underneath it and we've got some frosting to do frosting of facets and then uh, then we'll be done with the bottom half of the stone the pavilion which is kind of confusing because this is, by these being on the bottom, it's going to be the opposite when you turn the stone over. I mean, it's on this sails on this side, but when you look, turn it over, it's going to be on this side. So you kind of have to think backwards as you cut this and it gets a little bit confusing, but we're on our way. I will uh, polish some facets 
and uh, frost some other ones, probably with the 1200 or 600 grit for frosting, probably with a stationary lap and just rub the stone over it to, uh, to get the frosting effect, but we'll see how that works out. Okay, I've got the uh, pavilion all done um, with the sailboat polished and the background frosted. So there's the one sail, second sail, the back part of the boat, and the, right there, yeah, the front part. And everything else I frosted with a 600 grit diamond topper lap. For the small facets, like the, uh, the mast, which goes between the two sails, I just rubbed the stone on the uh, 600 lap for the bigger frosted facets, like this whole part here. I, I ran the lap slowly at 600 and, and set it where I needed it. So now we'll uh, transfer our sailboat and, uh, and cut the upper half of the crown. For our amethyst sailboat, I finished polishing the two tiers on the crown that go around the table, rather large table. So now I'm going to set my Altertech up to cut the table and polish it. I finished cutting and polishing the uh, sailboat. I pre-polished it with 12M lap, which is about the equivalent of a 1500 grit. And then I went to uh, uh, cerium oxide on altar laps and finished polishing it up. So now I'll soak it in acetone and uh, remove the adhesive and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, I want to follow up on the, the flashing light problem that we had earlier. And what was happening is on the uh, power supply to our dad, in the cord itself, there was, you know, from lifting it over the last couple of years, it, it caused uh, the connection problem. So when I originally had uh, put the rubber band around it, that did solve the problem, but then I called our friends at Altertech, who were very responsive, called me back right away uh, to talk through the issue, and and they have a angle, or, uh, they have an accessory, this angle piece right here. It it screws in to a screw to a hole that's already in the bottom of the dad, and then when you put your connector, the female connector, you plug it into your dad, you just hang it, uh, well you just, it sets on this little ledge, making sure that this part of the connector doesn't ever move, so it won't, uh, won't cause you a problem. And the other thing that, uh, that I did note, probably most of you already were doing this, but I had my wire running on this side of my mast assembly. Why? I don't know. So anyway, it should have always been running. I should have always run it out on the other side and out of the way and now I just tape it to my my light. But it's on the other side of the light and uh, I mean it's obvious, you know, it's going to be a blinding flash of the obvious and most of you are going to say, yeah we knew that and my answer is, well, why didn't you tell me? So I think our electrical problem is solved. Let me get the name of that, uh, of the accessory here, just in case you're interested. So this piece from Altertech, this uh, um, optional piece, again, it's, it comes with a screw and the Allen wrench comes with it for the screw and the hole is already there in the bottom of your, your dad. So the piece of equipment is called a jack retention bracket. Obviously, right? A jack retention bracket. So if you want that from Altertech, you won't have the problem that some people experience with uh, the connector coming in done. But I think if I would have, now that I'm looking back on it, if I would have had the wire going to the other side, the far side of my mast, I don't think I would have ever had a problem, probably. All right, back to fastening. So our sailboat weighs in at 1.46 carats. 
Okay, about the sailboat ring of fire design. Although there are only a few lines of cutting instructions required to cut this gemstone, I feel that this design has a difficulty of medium to hard, and I would not advise a brand new cutter to try to tackle this design. This is one of those designs where pictures of how the top side and bottom of the stone should look are definitely worth a thousand words. I just wish the instructions had a little bit more notes to explain them. It gets confusing, especially with the boat being on the bottom half of the stone. So when you cut it, one sail's on the right, but when you flip the stone over and look down at the crown, that sail is actually going to be on the left. So it gets confusing. I would recommend this design for cutters. I really like the way it turned out. I feel I gained a lot of cutting proficiency by tackling this design. But for new cutters, my recommendation is to put this design on your to-cut list but don't put it at the top of your list. Enjoy cutting sailboat ring of fire and let us know in the comments uh, how you like cutting it. I also had an issue with the power cord to my digital angle dial or dad of my Ultratech and several of my fellow fasteners also had faced this issue previously um, and they were quick to provide good advice on how to fix uh, the issue. A rubber band did work and I used it as a, as a temporary fix until I was able to uh, work with Altertech. The team at Altertech, as usual, had a fix for the issue and they were very responsive uh, when I called. The Alter team is always there when I need them. And finally, there's no way to know for sure, but I think I may have caused the power issue myself simply by not feeding the power supply cord to the far side of the mast and down to the power cord that way. I always had it on the near side of the mast and then going back uh, to the edge of the, of the Alter Tech. And it was always in the way, go figure. So anyway, I know you don't, none of you have that issue. So I hope you like the sailboat design, I do. Happy fasting everyone.